Hey, it's Austin from Cork Bats. Let's talk about Earl Campbell's iconic Jersey Strip run. Now, you've heard of Magic Mike. This is Magic Hike. For those who don't know who Earl Campbell was, he was Derrick Henry before Derrick Henry was even born. And by born, I mean built in Tony Stark's cave. Earl Campbell was the Derrick Henry of the late 70s. He was Disco Henry. So if Cork Bats is the number one Derrick Henry fan site on the internet, you gotta know that if we were around back in the day, we would have been the number one Earl Campbell uh, I don't know, like mail-in fan club or something? What what did people do before the internet? Now, Earl Campbell may have only been 5'11", but he was 232 pounds. And he had thighs the size of most people's torsos. I mean, look at those. They look like sequoias. You could carve tunnels in those things and have cars drive through them. And yes, this is what Earl Campbell looked like as a rookie. Like a dude pushing 50 with a couple of ex-wives, six kids, two mortgages, and a slight drinking problem. That problem, of course, being that he doesn't have another drink in his hand. It's funny how everyone in the 70s looked like they were in their 70s. But let's take it back to September 24th, 1978. Earl Campbell's rookie season. The Houston Oilers are playing the Los Angeles Rams in a battle between teams who move enough to make you believe that their dads are in the military. Now it's currently first and ten, and I know this because of this incredible on-screen graphics package this TV broadcast put together. And no, this video isn't still buffering. That's just how video quality was back then. I mean, this footage is grainer than the Zapruder film, and more blurry than that Bigfoot video. Except this video features something way more terrifying than Sasquatch, and its name is Earl. So Earl takes the toss to the left. He dodges one tackler, which kind of puts him in an awkward position, but then check this out. While Earl's off balance, he comes face to face with a squared up linebacker. And that linebacker is Isaiah Robertson, former NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year, six-time Pro Bowler, two-time second-team All-Pro, and four-time first-team All-Pro. And yet another guy who looks like he's 70. That's 6'3", 225 pounds, which in 1978 was massive. And if you factor for inflation, it would make him 6'8", 295. Now, Isaiah was in the eighth year of his career, while Earl was only in the fourth game of his career. And instead of giving Isaiah a stiff arm, he just headbutts the dude's sternum. He rams a ram. And the crazy thing is, it's powerful enough to knock Isaiah over. I mean, look at this impact again. Watch this dude's body move when he gets hit by this human torpedo. He looks like a crash test dummy. And he even goes airborne for a second. I mean, if you stop it right here, you tell me who's the rookie and who's known as one of the best players of their position in the 70s. And then after picking up a key block, from number 85 of the Rams, Earl keeps going. Now, you may notice he doesn't have good ball security here, but when you're as nasty as Earl, trust me, you don't need security. The only strip that happens on this play comes via Earl himself because you'll see Dave Elmendorf make the third attempt to tackle Earl in this play. And like everyone before him, he's unsuccessful. However, you'll notice he is able to make a very important impact on this play as he rips off a chunk of Earl's jersey. It's like a crazed fan at a BTS concert. So now Earl's running the rock showing off more midriff than a cowboy cheerleader. Now, keep in mind, this is the old Astrodome. They're playing on AstroTurf, which is anything but turf. I mean, the best way to describe this old playing surface is a mixture between concrete and sandpaper, and that's a texture nobody wants against their bare skin. And if you do, look, I'm not here to kink shame. Which is probably why Earl let these dudes take him down around the six-yard line. He's like Tom Brady. He doesn't want a strawberry, but he still did land pretty hard. But all in all, this is probably the greatest 16-yard run in the history of the NFL. I mean, look at the crowd. They're going wild. I, I think. I don't know. It, it's so blurry. Honestly, this could just be a close-up shot of a granite countertop. And then like a sorority girl in the morning after a fraternity formal, while looking all disheveled, Earl makes the walk of shame back to the sideline. And look at him. He's, he's like trotting like it's happened before. You know, it's like, oh, damn jersey got ripped off again. It's like, yeah, sure, we've all seen this in our family's turkey bowl, but never in an NFL game. I mean, forget the jersey. Michael Crabtree had nothing more than his necklace stripped off, and he was ready to fight everyone. And then I love like a play later, he comes back into the game with what looks like his dad's shirt on. Now, Earl's nickname is the Human Wrecking Ball, which kind of reminds me of Miley Cyrus. And if you think about it, it makes sense when you consider his knack for getting naked. But look, let this be a lesson that you should always put respect on Earl Campbell's name. And it should just go to show you how good Derrick Henry is. Because that's the thing about Derrick. He's made a habit of getting people to forget about Earl. <laughs>